fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. men gathered around the campfire in the early days of the western United States, stories were told of the masked rider of the plains. Astride his great horse Silver, he rode through the lanes and breadth of the new territory in the cause of justice. No one could match his strength and courage. Nothing could discourage him, and he finally brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear, when adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for our cave. Someone's waiting on the trail ahead. Hello, Silver. Away. The legislature was about to choose a permanent state capital. Arcade, the site of the temporary capital, hoped to retain the honor, but unexpectedly vigorous opposition developed from the supporters of Dundee. When the legislature convened at Arcade, the conflict between the two groups intensified. Mass meetings were held, arguments ripened into quarrels, pressure open and concealed was exerted. And at the time our story opens, Arcade supporters were bidding for attention with a parade down the main street. A parade that featured a band and banners, the former more spirited than expert at it. Look out here, Mr. Blake. That sure whoop it up. Forget it. Close that window back and sit down here. Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, I sure like band music. Why didn't you never think of hiring a band that makes some pretty noises for Dundee, Mr. Blake? I didn't ask you and Rip to the hotel to advise me what to do. What did you want, boss? Rip, you and Max are going to see that the legislature votes in favor of Dundee. Huh? How can we do anything? I've had the legislators canvassed. The vote on the Capitol will be taken sometime next week. And I happen to know that the vote will be almost evenly <laughs> divided. <laughs> you ought to know, Mr. Blake. You bought and paid for enough of them votes. That's my business. Oh, sure. How close do you figure it's going to be? Just close enough so that the decision will depend on three men. Yeah? Harry Palmer, Carl Hutton, and Fred Ulrich haven't decided between Arcade and Dundee yet. The others have. If we can get those three doubtful votes, we'll win. Well, why don't you go and buy them like you've done the others? They can't be bought. You want us to throw a scare in them? And they can't be frightened. You might as well understand that now. Threaten them and we'll lose any chance we've got. Cattlemen, eh? Palmer and Ulrich are. Hutton's a banker. You got some scheme in mind? I have. I've got too much at stake in this not to make every effort to win. Move the capital to Dundee and I'll make a fortune. The railroad will build there. My town property will double in value. And, well, uh, 
Where the legislature is, there's always a way to make money for the right men. Yeah. <laughs> I think as things stand, those three men will likely vote for Arcade. Dundee's reputation is against him. That ain't nobody's fault but your own. You've always said you'd run the town the way you want. Shut up, I... Max. Now then, there's just one thing to do. What's that? Arcade's known as a law-abiding town. That's on account of Dan Graham. They say he's a doggondest fellow for keeping a law you ever seen. I think you men can handle that. Yeah? Meaning? I want things to bust wide open here. I want Palmer and Hutton and Ulrich to get the idea that Arcade's one of the most lawless towns they've ever seen. I want those men so disgusted with the place before the next week is up that they wouldn't vote for it under any consideration. And that's your job. How far can we go? As far as you wish. There's no strings tied to it? None whatever. With one condition. Don't get caught. Someone might know that you're in my employ and start putting two and two together. That would ruin things. Mr. Blake will stand this town on its head. I'd like to make one suggestion. Yeah, go right ahead. I think that a series of hold-ups would be most effective. Take a man's cash and it starts him thinking. <laughs> I get you. Hold up some of the members of the legislature. In fact, you might hold up the three men I've mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. Keep them in mind. Hutton, Ulrich, Palmer. Up with your hands, mister. What in blue Mr. Hold up. I'll pass over your cash before I blow your head off. This is a hold-up. Give me that wallet. Don't make a move, partner. I'm collecting. This is a hold-up. I'll take that cash. Stand where you are. Up with your hands, friend. This is a hold-up. A hold-up, mister. Don't make a move. A hold-up. <laughs> This is an outrage. They took every penny I had. All my cash and brought daylight. What's your cake coming to? Ain't there no law here? Stole my cash. Hell me up. Oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Oh, boy. Some of the reports we heard about arcades certainly weren't exaggerated. What you find out? There have been more hold-ups this past week in town than in the last two years together. Mm, that heap bad. It's certainly unfortunate with a vote on the Capitol coming up the day after tomorrow. If Dundee wins out, it'll be one of the worst things that could happen. Dundee, heap crooked town. And dominated by that fellow Blake. Wait, what matter? Dominated by Blake. I wonder... Uh, me no Blake. Him big crook. Law not catch him, though. The crook hasn't been caught by the law. Thought it would may not mean a thing. It may get us nowhere. But I've got an idea. Blake would bear investigating. Uh, what we do, then? You and I are going back to town. We go now? Yes, call Scout. Here, Scout. By the time we get there, it'll be dark again. Uh -huh. You want disguise? No, I'll stay out of sight. No one will question you. Locate Blake. Follow him. See who he talks to. Find out what he has to say, if possible. And Tonto do that. I'll be waiting for you behind the cafe. It isn't likely anyone will be along that way, and there's plenty of cover. Uh -huh. If you hear and notice anything at all that we can act on, let me know at once. If our cage to win the capital, we'll have to act in a hurry. And that's right. Steady, old uh -huh. Come on, get him up, go. Since the day he had issued instructions to Rip and Max, Blake had avoided all contact with them. He cultivated the acquaintance of the three legislators whose votes might settle Dundee's fate, and he lost no opportunity to point out Arcade's lawlessness. One evening he learned that Palmer and Dulrick planned a strong protest to the sheriff, Dan Graham. So Blake joined them as they walked down the street toward the cafe and... I tell you, gentlemen, it would be an insult. An insult, gentlemen, to our state to make Arcade his capital after the events of past week. Things have been mighty bad, Blake, and that's fact. Bad? Outrageous. Uh, of course, uh, Dundee ain't such a pious town. Mr. Elric, Dundee has his faults. Yes, I confess it. But I can give you my word that in all the years I've lived there, there's been no such outbreak as this. Uh -huh. uh, how long has it been since you've been in Dundee? Oh, maybe two years. And you, Mr. Palmer? Gosh, I ain't been there for longer than that. But she was sure rip snort and terror that time. Ah, then you should visit Dundee now, gentlemen. I give you my word, you'd not recognize the town. Got worse, has it? Worse? Well, I should say not. 
I venture to say, gentlemen, that you won't find a more decent, self-respecting community anywhere between here and New England. In fact, Boston has the most... You just now said you had to admit it had its faults. What town hasn't? They amount to nothing. That don't just square with the stories I've heard. Lies maliciously circulated by the unscrupulous citizens of Arcade. Oh, I didn't mean I was just told them things by folks from here. A bad reputation is a hard thing to live down, Mr. Palmer. But Dundee is doing it. Uh, here's the cafe. Dan's here, most likely. That was his horse we just passed at the hitch rail. Yeah. Oh, there he is, the bar. Hi there, Sheriff. Howdy, gents. Good evening. Howdy, Dan. Can you join me in a drink? No, I reckon not. I believe these gentlemen have something of importance to say to you, Sheriff. Yeah, something important? Well, gosh, I reckon it must be from the looks on your faces. Well, I wasn't hankering real bad for drink myself, but maybe I'll be needing one. Barkeep, about three fingers of red eye. Oh, what? Take your pardon, <laughs> Injun. If I bumped you, I didn't see you standing there. <laughs> Not all right. Here you are, Dan. <coughs> Thank you. This ought to be fortifying. <coughs> there. <coughs> now let's have it. It's got to do with them holdups, I'll bet you. Something will have to be done, Dan. There's going to be. Ah, uh, going to be. You proved yourself incompetent to handle the situation. Arcade is simply too lawless for you. Hmm, always done all right up until now, didn't I? I'm not a resident of Arcade, I couldn't say. Then don't get so pesky anxious to have you say so now. Now, now Dan, nobody means to get you riled. This fellow does. You just spoke hasty as all. Doggone it, Dan, you savvy as well as we do that this can't go on. Why, blast it, I've been held up twice. We've all been held up. Didn't you hear me say there was going to be something done about it? But you can't let these Shucks things... them fellas ain't so tough. When Arcade wasn't nothing but a cross-trails cow town, I met up with plenty worse than them and put a curl in their tails, too. You you mean you have an idea who these scoundrels are? I have. Dan, I'm mighty glad to hear it. That makes real good hearing. Well, who are they? I ain't a saying, but I want oh, to know. You. <laughs> shucks, Blake. There ain't no use trying to pump Dan when he don't feel like talking. You might just well save your breath. But as a taxpayer, you I You ain't demand... a taxpayer in this county, and if you was, you still wouldn't be running my office. I think this is just a bluff, sir. I don't believe you have the slightest clue to the identities of those crooks. What's more, if you had, I have no confidence in your ability to capture them. Yeah? Well, Mr. Blake, you listen to me. Well, I'll listen to you. By but... this time tomorrow night, I'll have them fellas locked up behind bars. You see if I don't. Then when I've got them there, I'm going to look you up and make you eat your words. Ah, you're sure a fire eater, Dan. I am with them as riles me. Tomorrow night, I'll remind you of your promise. That suits me fine. Now, if you folks will excuse me, I'll be getting about my business. Well, there's nothing to keep us here. Come on, fellas, we'll walk back as far as the office of Dan if he's going that way. Want some more to eat, Redskin? No. Time to go now. Good night. Drop in again. <laughs> I thought we'd 30 hit a good prime stock. Steady. Steady, Scout. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. We've got to get to White Friend Pass. Get him up, Scout. That's you, people, Tommy. Tonto, hear news. Oh, Scout, ho. Ho, fella, ho. Hey, oh. Silver. Oh. Tonto, what did you hear? Care of Pell Blake. Him catch outlaw soon. I wonder if the sheriff has any idea who they are. Uh-huh. Him say him no, fella. He did? You're sure of that? That's right. He told that to Blake? That's right. Where's the sheriff now? Him go that way. You heard nothing that would connect Blake with the crooks? No. Me not here. Possible there isn't a connection. But still... What you think? No, Tonto. We don't dare take the chance. What you mean? I mean that if Blake is behind these holdups, he'll tell the crooks that the sheriff threatens them. Oh. And if they're convinced the sheriff suspects who they are, they'll take steps to see he never gets a chance to use that knowledge. Uh-huh. Blake may be innocent, Tonto, but if we fail to take precautions because of our doubt, we might be responsible for a man's death. Might not hesitate to kill. And what we do? You said the sheriff left the cafe? That's right. And we're going to find him. We're going to keep him in sight until we know he's safe. And that good idea. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up, Scott. I'll silver away! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode after the sheriff to protect him. Several hours later, after the town had quieted down for the night and the sheriff had returned to his home, Max and Rip followed him. So the middling old fool thinks he's got us spotted, does he? Well, his being so doggone smart is just the worst luck he ever had. Ah, he might have just been running a ranny. Blake says he wasn't. Sure, but Blake don't know everything, even if he thinks he does. Is that any reason why we should take the chance of being jailed? No, reckon not. Sheriff has got to be shut up and shut up to stay. You got any objections? Well, the only thing is, I ain't much for killing. I'd rather keep inside the law. Inside the law? What in blazes do you think we've been doing this last week? Studying to be sky pilots? Oh, shucks. You can't hardly call a few holdups being crooked. Why, that's more of a pastime, sort of. And if you never did anything crooked before, you sure are before this night's over. Well, I can stand it better than the sheriff, I reckon. There's his house. Must be still up. Leave the horses here. Whoa, whoa, they. Oh. <laughs> Come on. I'm with you. Hey there, boy. Somebody's burning a lamp. Uh-huh. Sheriff ain't hitched, is he? Don't think he is. Uh, it's most likely him. We'll find out mighty quick. Now keep that big mouth of yours closed. Gosh, you're agreeable. Quiet. It's him, Rip. What a blame good target he'll make sitting there beside that lamp. Look here. We'll both let him have it, then make tracks for the horses. Yeah. Put down those guns. What? I'm asking. I said drop those guns. Let the sheriff have it and get out. Oh, oh my hand. Who's out there? Who shot it? Come on, Silver. Grab them, Tonto. Tonto, get them. Come on, run for it. Oh, my hand. Run. No, you don't. In the saddle with you. Let me go. Let me go. Out there. Oh. Get that fellow, Tonto. Me my hand. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Get off and go. Carrying their two struggling and terrified prisoners across their saddles, the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced for camp. There they reined in their horses. Oh, 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 oh. Down with you. What do you want with us? Blast you. You nearly blowed my hand off. Your hand isn't hurt. But if I hadn't hit your gun, your shot might have killed the sheriff. Ah, uh, what's that to you? I'll ask the questions. Here, yeah, what's this? Keep your hands away from that pocket. A wallet. Looks like a lot of cash in it, too. Some of the money you've stolen? What do you mean that we stole? I know you're the man who've been responsible for the holdups in town. That ain't so. You can't prove nothing on us. You're Blake's man, aren't you? Blake? Who's he? Never heard of him. And why did you try to kill the sheriff? What do you mean? Father and I were near the sheriff's home because we knew Blake had been told the sheriff suspected certain men of the holdups. We knew Blake might have reason to be behind those holdups. We were. He'd warned the men he'd hired. You must be loco. And then we found you attempting to kill the sheriff. It fits too well. There's no use your denying it. You can talk all you want, but you won't get nothing out of us. I don't doubt, but what this wallet is stolen. What have you done with the rest of the loot? There must be a great deal more. You heard what Max told you. We can't stop you from asking, but you sure can't make us answer. Very well. Tell her. Uh -huh. Put these men back in the saddle. We'll take them into the sheriff. Hey, you he can't. He was leaning out of the window before we got away. He must have seen these men. He'll recognize them again. Uh -huh. We turn them over to law, huh? Get mounted, you two. No, wait. The sheriff's seen you, too. Of course. But Tonto and I'll be able to get away again. We'll see that you don't. Mm, what do you want to know? I'll ask you once more. Where have you hidden the money you've stolen? Tell him, Rip. We can't let him take us back. Hurry. We buried it right next to that big cottonwood. Straight back from the harness shop. The one in the meadow? Uh-huh. Now, let us go. We told you what you asked us. Not all of it. I want a confession that you've been employed by Blake. We don't know the fellow at all. We told you that. I heard you, but I didn't believe it. We've done all the talking we're going to. And I'm afraid you will have to see the sheriff. All right, go on and take us. We still ain't talking. You don't have to. Huh? You've already confessed. But we never done no such thing. It wasn't difficult to get you to tell where the loot was hidden. Because you're being paid by someone for these holdups. You can think what you want. You still have something to gain. As long as you don't get in bad with Blake by implicating him. Go on and talk. See what good it does you. There's probably still another motive for your silence. You're more afraid of Blake's anger than you are of the sheriff. <laughs> You're a mighty good guesser, ain't you? Those aren't guesses. They agree with the facts. What do you aim to do with us? There are several things I'm going to do. Yeah? I'm going to see that when the vote is taken in the legislature the day after tomorrow, 
Arcade gets the capital. A fine chance that town's got. When that happens, Blake will be ruined. Dundee's a boom town. It's slipping already. If Blake could have secured the capital for Dundee, it would have come out on top. Without the capital, his investments will soon be worthless. What's that got to do with us? Blake is not only going to be ruined, he's going to believe you two the cause of it. What? You're talking through your hat. We'll see. Tano, disarm these men and tie them. They're not going to get the chance to skip out before Blake deals with them. The following evening, Harry Palmer and Fred Ulrich were in Dan Graham's office. The attack on the sheriff's life had made them arrive at a final decision concerning the proper location for the state capital and... No, Dan, we're sorry about what happened and all, but Dundee is going to get our vote. That crooked town? That's just your opinion, Dan. No, I feel like Palmer here does. First it's holdups, and then it comes close to being murder. We're friends of yours, and we'd like to please you. But we're here representing the folks that elected us. We got to decide things like this in the way we think is best. That's the way it is, Dan. You're the best friends I've got. Well, thank you, Dan. And besides that, you're a couple of blind, addle-headed, stubborn, woolly-brained idiots that ain't got the sense of a day-old calf that's been kicked in the head by a mule. You're being fooled by that Blake fellow with all his slick talk. And you're just dumb enough to think you're smart enough to decide for yourself. Get out of here. Go on, get out. I don't feel so friendly just now. Well, we'll rob around again tomorrow when you're over your unfriendly feeling. Come on, Palmer. Stay where you are. What the? Mask. Put down them guns. Careful, Sheriff. Don't make the mistake of trying to draw. You're all right. What if I am? And you're Palmer? I am. And I've got a message for you. We got nothing to do with a masked crook. You see these guns? You can't scare us. Certain friends of mine are interested in the way you'll vote on the state capitol tomorrow. I'm here to tell you how to vote. Why, you... You'll vote for Dundee or take the consequences. You're threatening us? I think you understand me. You see, I told you what kind of a town that was. Hiring gunmen to bully you fellas into voting their way. Who sent you here? Never mind that. Just remember this. Vote for Dundee. What? Or you may stop lead. You listen to me. Well? No man ever bullied me with a gun and got away with it. You ain't going to be the first one. You've had your warning. That's enough. Vote for Dundee. Oh, they're so angry, they wouldn't vote for Dundee no matter what happens. <laughs> now to call on Carl Hutton. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Hutton? I'm not here to rob you, Hutton. Then what do you want? Here, this wallet. Take it. What's this for? You're a banker, Hutton. You understand the value of money. My friends are giving you that. And expect to get value in return. Value? Tomorrow you're voting for Dundee. Don't forget. If you do forget, this won't be a healthy state for you. Well, I'll be... Now what? Trying to bribe me. To bribe me with my own money. You crook, this is the wallet that was stolen from me just three nights ago. Then you're lucky to get it back. Now back to camp, Tonto. Get him up, Go. The following day, when the legislature convened for the all-important vote, feeling ran at fever heat. The temporary Capitol building, a converted town hall, was filled to overflowing with partisan spectators. No one could guess at the outcome of the vote, though everyone present knew it would be close. At the sound of the gavel, the crowd became silent. The vote was to be taken by roll call, and as the clerk called out the names of the legislators, one by one, and each replied, the tension mounted. James Keegan. Dundee. Terry Palmer. Okay. Carl Hutton. Okay. Slowly the roll was called. Slowly the vote was cast. Then at last the clerk reached the final name on his list, that of Fred Ulrich. Fred Ulrich! Arcade! It can't be! Something's wrong! 
he couldn't have been beat. You can't Mr. tell me. Mr. Blake, you're out of order. Quiet! Quiet! But it can't be. It can't be. Wait, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why your crooked town got beat. Your hard gunman tried to bully me into voting your way. You beat yourself. No, wait, I yeah, tell you. the same stunt was tried on me. He tried to bribe me with money stolen from me in the first place. Look, the blasted fools. Hey, what's that disturbance at the door? The Indians holding a gun on me. Oh, hold your head. Head. We don't want to see you. Rip. Max, you stupid blundering fools. I'll fix you for this. No, Mr. Blake, it wasn't that. Honest, it wasn't. It's a trick, Mr. Blake. This redskin here was in on it. What redskin? Uh, well, he was here just a second ago. He pushed us in here ahead of his shooting eye. Ah, lies. You'll be sorry for this day as long as you live. Yes, and I got something to make him sorry about. They're the fellas I suspicion staging them hold-ups. I seen him outside my house just after I was shot at. No, no, he Please, didn't. please, we were trick. You're going to jail and answer some downright pointed questions. And when you're through with them, Sheriff, turn them over to me. They ruined me with their blundering, and I'll see that they pay. <laughs> I know there are several people in town who think me an outlaw, but the results were worth it. Uh -huh. Arcade got the capital. Blake lost out. Whether his two men are convicted by the law or not, Blake will see to it their lives are made miserable. Uh -huh. Him plenty mad. Hello, Silver! How are Waiting for us! Hello, Silver! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.